Pete Saber. We're going to be talking about the play-in slate, the two-gamer here. Um, I know it's a lot of – I like to get into the playoffs when it's a lot of fun. I didn't – I haven't really gotten in the play-in game. I'm not playing tonight. But I know Sheets will be firing, and I know he's going to be playing some showdowns as well. Um, I do have some thoughts on the games. I have to, I'm going to be leaving in about 25 minutes or so. Um, so that's why I partly I'm not going to – not going to be around to see anything. Not that there's going to be much news or anything to wait on. We have the one, uh, we have the one, the big questionable was, I mean, not really that questionable, but uh, Duncan Robinson is in. Technically, Drummond and Sunmu are questionable. Might be very surprised if they don't play. And with that, we have to try and figure out a way to get enough value to be able to put together a lineup, I guess. Well, let's talk about something else for a second. Um, so a couple of things about playoff basketball, and we haven't... Um, and we haven't really talked about this yet. A couple mm-hmm. of things is that pretty much every game is a must-win game, which 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 means that all of the the studs, all the good players, you know, all, all the all the guys that they think that they're going to want to play a lot, if they're even remotely healthy, they're they're going to play a lot. Um, and you'll probably see minutes projections that you haven't seen before for some of these guys. Um, they're probably all real. You know, I remember those games wasn't too long ago where like LeBron would play 48 minutes, you know, um, not, not anymore. Okay. But, but, but that, my, my point is, is that people could be playing ceiling minutes. Um, the, the other thing, which is not as important for the, for, for the play in game but certainly as we get into the series is that when you're playing these series, these teams make adjustments and they figure out ways to attack other teams. And once they figure it out, you could expect a little more of that. You know what I mean? And so it's, it's, it's the like playoff DFS is really, I think weighted to the people that, you know, hashtag, you know, no ball. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, People that can figure out what you know what a team is likely to do to try to win a short series like this, and be able to kind of manually or at least instinctively adjust their projections or just their play, whatever, to uh, to that. And Bobby has been really, really, really good at that over the years. Is like just figuring out like like wh- whether a team or is going to oh look at this they're going to now be double teaming freaking and beat every freaking possession. For example, mm-hmm. that was last year, I think. I mean, that was the big, the big narrative last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you're going to have an advantage over, oh, at least in, in that respect, over the people that are just straight simming and optimizing and stuff, um, based on the rest of the season. And so, just stay, stay with us for all the different, you know, for all the live streams and all the whatever, because you know, to to see see what Bobby thinks about how these series are going you know and mm-hmm. and it's like by the time most people realize what's what changes people teams have made it's already been made you know four games before that <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and, and hopefully we're going to be on that kind of stuff um a little earlier than, than most people um mm-hmm. but with, with respect to like matches for example and we could certainly talk about this in context of this slate like like these two let, let's talk about the games right so so these two games, like first of all, like who do you like? What do you what do you think these games are going to look like? Uh, I think I, I like Philadelphia and I like Chicago. Um, I have more. I wouldn't. Nothing Miami does in the postseason is ever going to surprise me. Um, but I actually think Philadelphia makes a run in the play, in, in the playoffs too. Um, I think that. No offense. I, I hope I hope for your sake they don't. But I think that I think that if they win this game tonight, they go and beat your Knicks. Um, that's my, 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 my prediction for Philly. And I think that they've got an excellent shot to be in the conference finals against Boston. Um, I think they put their best foot forward tonight and beats had enough games under him to where I think that, uh, his minutes are going to be right near 40, just like you'd expect in a game of this magnitude. Um, and I, I, I you know, the, the, I think the, in general to, on tonight's thing, I would, I think you'd want to be focused a little more on Chicago, Atlanta. Um, just because the pace is going to be better, even though it's still not going to be ideal. Um, that's I would just prefer to go to that game, especially. Well, what do you think Miami is going to try to do in this? Game? You think Miami can can shut can 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 x you know Embiid out of this game some to some degree or no? I mean, not fantasy. Like 
what's that? What, Embiid is projected at, at 57 fantasy points. I would be very surprised if Embiid has less than 60 fantasy points, but that's okay. It doesn't mean it's that far off. Um, they're going to try and Bam is, you know, basically the best guy in the world to do it other than Wemby. Um, but I, I, I personally don't think it's, you know, a doable thing. Like we've watched this over and over again for a long time. Uh, we know how much they're going to focus on Embiid. Uh, I, I would make sure, well, if we had enough value, I would make sure to try to play one of Embiid or Maxi, but I don't think you're going to have that value. So it becomes a little bit tricky trying to guess the uh, the Philadelphia, like trying to figure out what to do if you're not going to play one of those guys in this game. But no, I do not think that they will be able to shut down Embiid. I do think that it will, they would, like if this was a big slate, I would never even consider it because there'd be somebody else, you know, would be a, a, a better play. Um, but I, I don't think that at, at 11,000, you know, he's still going to project as one of the best point per dollar plays if, if nothing else. Um, and I think Miami is going to, I'm sorry, I think that uh, best play on Miami, in my opinion, would be Jimmy Butler. Uh, we also know that it could be the Tyler Hero show. We've seen that before, seen that plenty of times. But I, I like the Butler play, um, always plays well in Philly, not that it matters because it's a, play, a playoff game anyway. So he's, you know. But that 8700 price tag on Jimmy, we find, is very not worth it in the regular season for the most part and extremely worth it in the postseason. Now, he does have some duds in there as well. But instead of saying I would definitely play one of Maxi or Embiid, I would say that I would have to play probably one of Butler, Bam, or Hero. Because I don't think Philadelphia is going to just win this game by 30 points. Now that I said it out loud, it's possible, but it's not, not what I'm taking. Yeah, I was hoping you would sell, tell me something that, that else. I was hoping you were going to say that they're just going to double team Embiid, so then we should just play all the other guys. I don't think that I think they'd be really smart not to do that, actually, because and I think that they're going to be smart. I mean, they have the best straight up one on one defender at the position outside of and, and, and you can anybody can at me about Rudy Gobert. Get out of here. Um, uh, Bam, Bam is, in my opinion, maybe you could say, no, I wouldn't even say Anthony Davis anymore. It's ba- it's, it's it's Wemby and Bam are the two best guys who have a chance to slow down at least a guy like Embiid. Um I don't think it's going to be enough to where they're – I don't think they're going to need to double enough because it's not like the rest of this – like this is the healthier the Sixers have been. Sixers have one of the best shooters in NBA and Buddy Heald, which we don't even know how many minutes he's going to get. He'd be the guy I might speculate with if you did think they were going to double. But, I mean, you'll see some doubles from them. Don't get me wrong. But I, overall, I, I do expect more straight-up play than you see most teams play with Embiid. How many – um? how many minutes, assuming the game is close, whatever, how many do you think Embiid can play? You think he could play 40 or no? Yeah. I think if it's close, he could because I think it's. I think there's a huge difference between. Look, you can lose this game if you're Philly and you still have a chance, but then you're playing Boston in the first round. Uh, you you want to win this game if you're Philly and Miami really, really badly. <laughs> um, right. So I think you get the best effort from both. Oh wait, teams. wait. Why, why don't we like go backwards again? So tell me, tell me what the situation is. Like, who needs to win? Who who can afford a loss? How is it working? Yeah, so Philly, Philly, Miami are playing for the seven seed. The loser will play the winner of Atlanta, Chicago for the eight seed. And Atlanta, Chicago, losing, you go home. Yes. So that's like the ultimate must win game. I mean, that's, that's except for both teams are terrible and they're going to go home anyway. I think they've sort of been. Well, I mean, listen, I don't think they think of it that way. I think that they all think that they can win at this point. I mean, they sat, I, I don't agree because the, the Bulls decided to sit Zach Levine out when he was perfectly capable of playing. Um, so I, I actually don't think, I mean, I think they're going to try to win. But I don't think that they're going to try. I don't think they, anybody thinks they have it. I don't think that. I don't think Chicago or Atlanta is crazy enough to think they have a chance against Boston. I do think both Miami and Philadelphia think that. Yeah, and Miami, all they do is make finals. So I mean, like, yeah, and all they do is beat Boston and Philly every time. And here I am picking Philly right off the bat. They, they don't care what their seed is. They don't care anything. They just, you know, they just they just make finals. That's it. They don't mind that, that Bam and Hero and everybody's out except for Jimmy Butler and a bunch of guys who were seven men, seventh men on the bench. Um, who do you think? Um, who do you who who do you think uh, from at least the first game? And we'll, and I agree with you. I th- I think that you're supposed to, for a lot of reasons, attack the second game more. Mm-hmm. First of all, I do think that the must win situation means something. Mm-hmm. Second of all, it's a later game, so you can screw around if you have to. Mm-hmm. And uh, and these are the two worst of the four teams as far as def- defense goes. Yeah. Um, uh, so, and, and the, the total is 15 points higher. So I mean, for all of those reasons, um, some, some, some 
like Embiid with a whole bunch of guys from Atlanta, Chicago, for example, <laughs> that, 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 that could work. But from the Miami Philadelphia game, like, like wh- what do you make of any of the value there? Like, like I'm just throwing names like Kyle Lowry, you know, I, I just, I'm just running builds right now. Yeah. 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 So um, um, uh, Tobias Harris, I mean, what, what aside from Embiid are you going to like from um, that game? So, Actually, I, like I actually probably wouldn't end up being able to get to MB tonight just because of the way the pricing is. I think it's just really hard to do. Um, so I, I, I like uh, the the I, I I do like Maxi Maxi and Jimmy Butler or Maxi and Tyler Hero would be my main plays from the first game. I would definitely take some shots on a low owned Buddy Heald because I don't I think it's speculative to know what he's what his role is going to be. Now he could have almost like no role. But he could make a couple threes and they're down. And the next thing you know, he turns into the Larry Nance and basically all the guys who got all of the run after, you know, after the first six minutes of the third quarter. And basically actually after the first minute, six minutes of the first quarter, too. Um, so if Heald gets hot, he could easily take Kelly Oubre's job tonight. He could take um, <laughs> uh, Kyle Lowry's, uh, some of Kyle Lowry's minutes. Uh, Batum w- would be a little bit less of a, of a thing. I-, I think there's a chance Buddy Heald could be that get weird play. Now I'm not saying it's like an incredibly likely or it's a great matchup, but it's just you don't have much to choose from. Um, but like, for example, like Jovic, who's projected to be 25% owned, and meanwhile you've got what's his name, uh, Buddy Heald at the same price or basically the same price, who's projected to be 5% owned. I think that you go that route and you play the guys who can get hot or turn things around. Trey Murphy, oh Trey Murphy and Larry Nance were the ones for for, for New Orleans who brought him. Oh, and Alvarado. They, they, uh, New Orleans, uh, last night, she's just show you, and it wasn't even a must win. New Orleans sat sat McCollum, they sat Ingram, um, and they sat what's his name down the stretch. Uh, well, Zion got hurt, but he was killing him. But the uh, but they played all their bench guys instead because they 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 were down by twenty or down by eighteen. And they came back and they just left the guys out there who brought them back. So that that in that sort of thinking, I think that the best plays from the first game would be or you know long shot plays would be Buddy Healed. Um, Caleb Martin's not a long shot play, so he doesn't qualify. I think Jaime Hawkes is, is very thin, but there's an outside chance he could be that guy tonight. So these are the cheap ones. These are the ones who are low owned that I really like would be, uh, Hawkes and healed with the mainstays being hero Butler and Lowry. I'm sorry. Her- sorry. Hero Butler and, uh, Maxi. Hmm. You guys, we don't look at revenge in the playoffs. We've got, we got to remember that. You, you may, maybe for like a game on the road when you're up three nothing or I don't know. There's it's it's a very there's no such thing as revenge things in the playoffs. And by the way, everybody in this in a lot of these games you could make that case for. But I don't I don't think you want to think about revenge games in the playoffs as if it matters that much. Would you play? Um, so so you talked about Ubre healed. Yeah, healed, healed, healed. I'm getting to. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just just kind of force in some low owned stuff. Um, and but the good thing is, I mean, all these guys are not bad. The low owned guys I'm getting, like you said, like Ubre. Um, who did I just say? Uh, the, the guy you said, um, healed. Yeah, yeah. If healed can, yeah, healed, healed could always get hot. I guess doesn't seem like. The game environment, but whatever. It's a two-game slate, you know. Like it's a- right. No, it's 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 just it's just the forty-six hundred price tag, the potential heat check factor, and we're you know I'm, in, I'm sitting here talking to uh to Power in in the Discord because he's asking about the, what's with the Duncan Robinson's minutes limit now. There was one, now there isn't. It doesn't even matter. Like Duncan Robinson is like a a poorer version. He's further down the bench than Heald is. I mean, I have Duncan Robinson as their ninth highest minutes tonight. And I think there's an outside chance Duncan Robinson doesn't play at all. I think there's an, I think there's a chance he plays up playing 20 minutes. I, I really do. It's just, it's just, it's just hard to know in game one of a one of one exactly who's it going to be love Hawkes. Are they going to give Kai Smith the same minutes? Um, it's, it, it really is up in the air. And we saw Miami last year. The answer was different every single game. They just seem to find a little magic thing on it. Their whole ride up there. So, so yeah, maybe you do include Duncan Robinson in it, but I don't think I would be looking more at guys like Heald who are actually there's a I think Heald has a better chance to play more minutes than than uh, than Duncan Robinson, and he's cheaper. 
So so once again, so the winner of Miami Philly plays the Knicks. Yeah. And the loser plays the winner of Atlanta Chicago. Yes. For the eight nine or whatever. Yeah, for the eight for the eight seed. Yeah. For the eight. Okay. Perfect. And that and that would play Boston. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna keep answering this. Anybody, I'll post my early builds. I'll post my stuff in Discord. We are not going to be showing lineups out of the going out of our way to show you our lineups on this show. I, even if we actually happen to do it and have some fun and do a build or a Friday build that Sheets does that wants to do it on FanDuel, fine. But I, in general, that is not what we're doing. So we're never going to just start saying, oh, yeah, here's all my lineups, especially because we have people who are paying content, you know, to see exactly what our exposures are and see what kind of stuff we're doing in the, in the, in the, on the actual site. So I, I just I, I just can't show the lineups directly up here. So, Dude, I'll tell you this, owing to the real, the real uh, dedication to process over lineups, over results. So one thing I didn't tell you about the um, – the MMA thing from last week. So last week, I, for those of you who don't know, I got like second in the in the in the big one, like a couple of strikes away from getting you know, getting first, and it was all due to the the lineup construction video I did, where I walked through the whole process of doing it. And one thing that I was doing in my process, I, I said I was going to do this, I was going to do this, I was going to do this, fifty from here, fifty from here. At no point did I even know who I had. I didn't check. I didn't double check. I didn't know what my exposures were. I didn't care. I had my process. It gave me what I wanted, and I literally didn't check who I had until the slate started. So I, I was just as ignorant as everybody else was as what my lineups were. Um, with, with respect to process for this um, for this slate, um, and remember, it is a two-game slate. So first thing is that don't worry about, about – having a hundred guys from each game from, from one team. Don't worry about playing two centers. Don't worry about any of that. Um, the only question that you really want to ask is how, how is how you get different. Okay. And when I say that, are you going to get different by playing lower owned guys? And remember it's basketball. So if they're all lower owned, they're probably not going to score as much. <laughs> they, they, yeah. they might, but they probably won't. Um, and, or are you going to leave money on the table? And those are really the two, the two or both, you know what I mean? Right, right. So those are the two questions. Now, one thing I will say, by the way, is that I think if you really want to get different right off the bat, you'll just stack the crap out of the first game. You know what I mean? Hope it, hope it goes off somehow. Hope it goes to overtime and, and it stout scores the second one. Cause I don't think people are going to do that. Um, yeah. I mean that you probably want to guess at who that guy is going to be for Miami. Um, you know, like, do you think it will be done? I mean, that this is the thing. I think it's more likely to be Hawkes unless Duncan Robinson gets hot, but they have all these guys and it's going to go towards one of them. I just don't know which one it's going to be right now. And I don't know if they know the answer because they haven't had all these guys healthy most of the season. And we've um, seen different rotations. So who, um, all right. Who do you like in the next game? I like Chicago. Um, I think they're the better basketball team and the plays I'd be looking at tonight. I, I probably would skip the trade Ajante thing, even though it's there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, they're both there now. Ajante's price is if Trey wasn't there. Trey is priced sort of so close enough to where he always is, but with playoff stuff on it. Um, I think that uh, getting Bogdanovich, uh, Garrison Matthews, you're going to have like, that's you kind of like Garrison Matthews might have, it was probably going to be the highest owned player on the slate. And like genuinely has like a, I don't know if he has a DNP CD to sit, like possibility, but he's got like a 10 minute possibility. That's possible. Um, so I'm sort of struggling with it because I think you use that value. Uh, I think that getting a little bit of the, uh, like I mentioned, I, I like Hunter and, and Bogdanovich as mid range plays just because you kind of need mid range to, to work today. And on the bull side, uh, Vooch is going to be the mega chalk. I like Vooch a lot. Um, but I have I, I, I like Vooch and DeRozan a lot, and then I think you're playing at least one of Kobe White and Alex Caruso or Dasunmu, and then if you wanted to go a little fr uh, fringier, Javante Green, and then you've got DeAndre, you've got Andre Drummond who's questionable. He would be my other super get weird low ownership play. I I I think I agree with that. You know, listen, if 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 Vooch is mega chalk, that's yeah. it's, it, you you really should play some Drummond. Absolutely, especially as it's. I mean, but the only thing is, he legitimately may not play. So just make sure you keep an eye out for that. Yeah, well, there you go, yeah. <laughs> and you lose. What can I tell you? No, then, then you just play Bruno Fernando on the other side. You know, 
I think that's probably the best whip route. Um, but yeah, the, the, the lineups, and I'm building one right now just so I have like something out there. Um, but but I, I, again, you're going to need a lot of this mid range and, and or you're going to have to play the very, you know, the Garrison Matthews is something like it's just a it's a strange situation where we have a guy who averages like nine fantasy points and his minutes are going to be cut down and he could play 30 minutes and score three. I've seen that before. But you just don't have other 3,100 guys who are getting even in the mix tonight. So you kind of need the value at some places. So I expect both he and Caleb Martin will be really popular. Oh, Caleb Martin's the other one. He's going to keep down the ownership. He's another reason why Heald will be lower owned. Um, yeah, so maybe, I mean, that's my thing. I think I'm going to play Heald, go four, try to force in four from the first game, and then try to use this fringier mid-range in the second game although I would really like to get to Vooch, but at his ownership, I don't mind pivoting and saying, you know what, I'll play Drummond or Fernando and that'll be that. Yeah. And with respect to, with uh, with using the Sims and stuff, uh, again, I, I, I will probably for both the, not for the alley-oop, but for the, like the two, for the, 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 the lottery, I'm going to I'm going to probably use the geo mean stuff and just play low on guys. I'm not going to I'm not going to leave money on the table intentionally. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to play low on guys and see how it works out. You know, I'll get some drum and get some get some nonsense. Maybe maybe I don't even know how maybe some Batum or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh just 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 stuff that could that that could happen, you know. Right. Um a lot of people playing. Actually, it's not that big of a, you know, not that many people playing. Um mm -hmm. But that's that's just what I'm doing. It's just in the two game. In the in the in, in the big buy-ins, I'm just you know I'm just gonna play the hashtag best plays, whatever. But I don't know. But I don't think I'm gonna get to Embiid either, Bobby. Like you said, it's just hard to do. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to do without getting uncomfortable. And so I did build one lineup. Um, and I just to say, like I, I'm going to. I, I like those the fringy 4K guys to take a shot on Drummond. And like I said, if Drummond's out, just you can just flip over to Fernando. But I, I am taking, and I don't think that Buddy Heald is. I want to make this really clear when, because we're going to talk a lot of playoff stuff, and I'm going to say a lot of plays that are really fringy because you have to do that in some situations because there's no other value. And I just want to say, like, I do think that like there's a chance that that Buddy Heald might like have like five fantasy points tonight. But you're telling me he's going to play 20 minutes no matter what, probably. If he's hot and the way the, the game goes a certain direction, that could become 28 minutes, and he can put up 45 in, in that time. Just if they if they decide to double Embiid, if Embiid's beating him up too, there's a lot of ways it could go. So I like the idea of getting that low ownership um, on on guys who can get hot, basically. And Trey Murphy is the best example ever from last night. Yeah. See what it can happen with that guy. You know, if you get somebody who's hot. Um. Yeah, Maxi is actually going to be, I think, more popular than Embiid. I mean, I know they're different prices. Um, I will give that away that the projections have them be like, uh, the ones I trust the most, like Goldie's, uh, have them closer to 12%. Like Sabersim has them closer to, to 20 some odd percent. I think Maxi ends up significant. I, I think Maxi might, might end up being double or triple the ownership of MB for what it's worth. Now, Maxi is not off the board. Vucevic is not off the board. These are extremely chalky plays, which are totally fine. But I just want to remind everybody, you're not, that's, that's not where you're, you're not planting a flag on anything crazy there. You're just planting a flag on the chalk. As far as showdown, I'll just, again, I'm just going to, I did really well hit yesterday. Oh, I have a guy for you. C can I give you any uh, Kevin Love tonight? Um, That's the other, that's the other fringy one, but I don't think the reason why, see, I thought he was going to be a little bit more popular, but and and also they're they're not going to put him out there at the four that much, so will they? Well, I guess will they put him on MB just to go weird? It's possible. I, I can get behind it. Sure. Yeah. And listen, he's got he's got experience, you know, and it's a you know, must win game. Shit, it's I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, do you like for, what else in Atlanta? Do you like Trey Young? I mean, I, it's the worst matchup for those two guys. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I actually am not, I, I would not, I'm not, I'm not personally getting to the Trey DeJounte thing. If I did, it would be Trey, but I, I, I don't think I'd get to it. So basically you like Maxi more than those guys. 
And I think I like Jimmy Butler better than those guys too. Yeah. Sonogo. Sonogo's not even playing. Who? He's not even active. This the other the other backup center for the Bulls. He's not even active. Yeah, but well, that's a that's an interesting question. Is is if is if um if a if Drummond is out, like who's the backup center? It doesn't really. The problem is there is there isn't one. You just play one of the other guys at center. It'll it'll be like a. It, it won't really be anybody. It'll 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 be a combination of uh, Tory Craig and Javante Green, and they'll just play small. Okay. I guess uh, I guess that's it. Um, I am gonna. I did put up the NBA projections. I'm gonna try to scramble to get the hockey ones up for whoever is interested in that, because only because I'm doing it myself anyway. And I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna do one more golf uh, projection update. Little uh, still, uh, it's it's un- it's uncomfortable that I'm might be playing so much of 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 like Lucas Glover and or Siwoo Kim, but I'll I'll take I'll take another look at it. Um, I don't but- think I think those I think Lucas Glover especially like I think that's a really good play. People don't realize. That. I mean, he he like had the harder path to come back at the match. What was he? He was like four over through five, and then he bounced. I mean, he really played good golf. I think, and he's really good at this stuff. He's just not long, so he he fits the criteria. Hey, both see. of those guys fit so well to see with Kim and the Lucas Glover. I mean, they, they yeah. The only thing with was he tends to play better on Pete Dye courses, and this isn't right. At least, unless I I got to double check my research on that one. Well, we did such a great job with the with the research on the cut line this week that that. Uh, <laughs> We're talking about the cut line for 10 minutes, which doesn't exist. We spent 15 minutes discussing who's the best guy to miss the cut. Uh, <laughs> well, I was correct. I said, no, I said none of the 9K guys would miss it, right? So that's you what I mean. You had, it, you had it figured out. Well, but, before um, I but maybe, maybe, hey, but what about the, uh, what about the under, uh, not the under, the, the uh, Scheffler Burns to miss the, uh, miss the tournament uh, prop or whatever? Oh, yeah. Um, that's, 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 that's the one that's really... Boy, that is. A, I'm sure there's something out there. I might have to ask my buddies. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit uh, take my kid to his work and then go visit my fam. Everything all else right. good? Sounds, here? Good. Sounds responsible. <laughs> okay, man. Good luck tonight, buddy. Um, yeah. Good luck, everybody, and let's enjoy the playoffs. Really excited for the real playoffs to start in a few yeah. days.